Live! Live! Hello! Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Social Abstinence Show with me, Sarah Arrow, and me, Ola Agbamoni, the business detective. And today is our first episode, and so far we're 47 minutes late. Um, I've not got my Google Hangout gear on, I've got my Wonder Woman cape, I've not run a brush through my hair, and I've not had a chance to print my business book so I look intelligent. Ola, on the other hand, is looking very glamorous. You kept that one sly, love. <laughs> I had more time than you, I wasn't getting my legs waxed. So, um... <laughs> Slapped on a bit of lippy, found the light. So is the lighting good? So I found the light to light me at the back. The light's good. Light good. Mm -hmm. I just realised um, I'm supposed to be fixing the light in the ceiling because it's, it's gone. You can't put a bulb in it. And I thought, oh, my gosh. <laughs> ah, so not only are you going to be 47 minutes late when you do a hangout, you've got to get your legs waxed, you've got to fix the light bulbs in the ceiling, and you've got to put your lippy on. Otherwise, it's not a social media hangout at all. Well, social media is all about connection in real life, and this is real life. <laughs> I get much more real than this. Oh, I always feel what I don't like about Hangouts is that you can't see you. I can see you, but I can't see me. So, um, well, not as a big picture like the audience is seeing me. And it's kind of really disconcerting because you think, what do I look like? <laughs> what can they see? <laughs> you look gorgeous. You look very look pink gorgeous. and glamorous. And I may have to come round with a baseball bat and sort you out so you look like me next week. <laughs> Old and haggard. <laughs> You're not older than the haggard at all. Apart from the the, the Wonder Woman cake, is, is really cutting it actually. I kind of feel I should have one. You like it, don't you? You know, it's, it's amazing. Maybe it's more Batman. It's just black and not blue and red like Wonder Woman. You know. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to be talking about social media and social media addiction. Hmm. Yes, we are. We're going to be um, having these shows every Friday. Hopefully, next week we'll be on time. On message, <laughs> <laughs> a bit more coordinated than we currently are. So you've got to bear with us, you know. And when I look this back, I'm going to edit it. I'm going to edit to my video. Well, give me some blonde highlights in your Absolutely. editing because I'm looking a bit like Elvira at the moment, and it's not a good look on me. <laughs> I'm always Photoshop, and people say to me, "You photoshopped your picture." I'm like, Too right, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose that leads us into our first question. Uh, should I Photoshop my picture for social media platforms? Well, absolutely. And that's from Sarah Arrow of SarkyMedia.com. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Um, I'm, 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 I'm actually, I'm going to, you know, come off the fence here because you know there's all this stuff about being natural and all the rest of it. But you know, if you've got a still image of you, so not like we're here now, you can actually see me. But if you've got a still image of you on your website, you want to look your best because people have got less than three seconds to decide whether or not they're going to inter interact with you. You know, they're going to see you and then go. And quite frankly, we're all very shallow. You know, we've been educated by, by, the, by the TV and the magazines, and we look for pretty. You know, and as much as we might want to be socially conscious and PC, everyone looks for pretty. And if you see an ugly picture, you think, oh, I'll move on. So if, you, if you're in business... We're and you're all shallow. Oh, absolutely. That's what you're we're all yeah, shallow, yeah. and yes, it's okay to Photoshop your photograph and... Put I'm it saying, on your sites so people connect with us that little bit longer. But when they meet us in real life, they'll run away screaming, "Ah, ah they're an utter!" And now, now there's a difference between Photoshop and changing your picture to com a completely different person. So if you, you know, so like you said, you know, I haven't really got my lippy on and my complexion doesn't look as good in the camera light. You know, you, you can Photoshop your picture. I, I've Photoshopped mine, and people can see their Photoshop, but they know that's the best you. If you go to a studio and they take a picture of you, if it's come out horrible, you're paying for it. They're not going to give you the poor light picture. They're going to Photoshop it, and they give it back to you. So that's all I'm saying. We're talking about your profile picture, the picture that's going to represent you, and I'm suggesting that you make yourself look the best. You know, I don't see um, Beyonce <laughs> in <laughs> <of> my pictures <laughs> with her uh, like shadow eyes. 
huff about her, was it last year at the Super Bowl, where some of the photographers had released photos that were not Beyonce approved, where she was dancing and you could see all her muscles rippling and um, her lips in awkward positions as she was singing the words and her hair wasn't looking great. And she apparently was very upset that the unauthorized pictures of her actually doing her job were being released and shared across the social media platform. So if airbrushing and looking your absolute best all the time is good enough for Beyonce, it's going to have to be good enough for us too, I guess. Yeah, it's really sad that because, you know, um, one of the things that social media does, and people do say this, it makes your life public. You're on display all the time. And as a human being, that's a lot of pressure. If you've always got to look good because you're constantly going to be judged, then, you you know, you don't want negative images out there about you because that's what people will hook, hook on to. And, you know, one bad picture is, is, you know, counteracts a million fantastic ones. And that's where Beyonce is coming from. I know we shouldn't really get into that, but it's a consideration. And I speak to a lot of business owners who really don't want to be that exposed on social media. They really want to control what's seen about them. And that's the same thing that Beyonce is doing. She said, I want to control what you see of me because there's part of me that I want to keep private. I don't want it on social media. And if you violate that and I've got the legal clout to stop you, I'm going to stop you. Obviously, we don't. But then no one's sitting around the corner with a paparazzi camera trying to take a sneak shot at us. So we have to no. have control. So we can make sure everything we put up is what we want people to see of us and that we look our best. So that just comes back to the photoshopping. So yeah, I was a bit lighthearted about it. But you know, if you feel vulnerable and you always want to look your best, then put some effort into your pictures. I see people who've got um just the you think, okay, a selfie, what why is that your business picture? <laughs> You've taken no effort with it at all. You know, everyone's gonna say, Oh, that woman's so judgmental. But you know, I, I don't say that to people. But in, in that way, but as I said, you, you've got so little time to make an impression, and you know, do any Google search for anything and see how many results come back. That's your competition. That's everybody whose attention is, you know, is vying for your attention. So you you have to put your best foot forward if you're going to get any results. Yep. So our first social media question by me has been answered put the best <laughs> you forward and if you're tempted to use a selfie yes it may look authentic but you're really making a seriously good investment by getting a decent photographer to get some nice headshots and they can do the messy photoshop bits of enhancing your cheekbones and all of that and making you look the best you without it being obvious that it's photoshopped. So that's our first question. We've also got a question from Leslie. And Leslie wanted to know, do you have to be on every single social media network out there? Well, only if you don't want to sleep, you have no life, and you don't want to do anything else at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, there must be a what. Even if you were just talking about the main ones, it's got a good, good ten, you know, and mm. it's, 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 think of it like butter. If you wanted to uh, spread your butter really thin, you're barely going to taste it on anything. Whereas if you just thought, do you know what, I'm going to have a couple of slices of bread, <laughs> put me a dollop of butter on it, and then, you know, you get to taste your butter. And social media is the same, you know. Yeah, you can spread yourself about, but unless you've got a team and I mean a team of people to help you manage all their profiles, you're not going to be able to manage it. You know, you can't do, even with the best management system in the world, even with everything set up, you can't do a minute here and a minute there. It's not, that's not how you build a relationship. If you went down the street and everybody knew and said, hi, 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 and that's the only con contact you ever had with them, you might say hi back, but you know, you don't know who they are. You, you're not really going to engage with them. And if they invited you to their party, you might think, son, off you, I never say hi to me. <laughs> Why am I there? <laughs> So social media is like that. I'd, I'd say, first question, are your audience le using it? Because if your audience aren't there, then there's no point in you being on it for your business. You know, if you're just doing it to entertain yourself, do what you like. But if you're trying to use it for your business, and the primary reason we use social media for business is to get leads, get clients. You know, that's what we're here for. So if your audience aren't on it, then you don't need to be on the platform. And if the audience are on that platform... What, what are they looking for? What sorts of things are they looking for for you? So, you know, make sure you're, you're on the platforms where your audience are and that, you know, what you're prepared to put on that platform is what they're looking for on that platform. So, what I mean is, if, well, if you're on Facebook, people go to Facebook to entertain themselves primarily 
and to catch up with friends. I don't really go there to be educated. So, you know, if, you're, if you've got education stuff that you want to share, it's better on your website than it is on it's like a Facebook page because, you know, pe people aren't there for that. They're there more for the entertaining stuff that you put up all the time, Sarah. I love your stuff. Yeah, like, what Disney princess am I? I'm apparently I'm princess Jeremy. <laughs> of all the cokey, hokey, shyster princesses I could be, I'm the one with the flying carpet and the tiger as a man. <laughs> I ain't got any mates that are tigers in real life. I mean, what kind of meme is that? But it's a popular one, and people do like to share popular things, and they're not always business related, Absolutely. in particular on Facebook. Which is, which, is, which is what I'm saying. So, you know, we come back to your original point. Social media is about building relationships. And you start where people are at, don't you? You start with what they want to talk about. Because um, if you only talk about what you want to talk about, then pretty soon no one's listening. And if no one's listening, you're wasting your time. And if anyone sees my mate that's really a tiger and my flying carpet, can you just pop them in the post to me? Um, you'll have to pay the postage. And I live in Essex, and the postman's not very good with tigers, so you might need a big cage to wrap it up and post it to me. Well, I was thinking if you're, going to be if you're going to be Jasmine's, forget the tiger and the bloody carpet. You've got Aladdin and the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I get Mulan? If I'm going to do one of these, why, why can't I get sword fight in Mulan and something like that? Why do I get the Disney princess that... Mm. Well, I don't know. Do you know what, right? I think there's a lot to be said to being kept as a woman, you know. <laughs> you get to my age. All the, all the feminist fight goes out of you. You're just looking for something to camp you. <laughs> Fly you out the bowl, lick your toes on the beach. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's your stance on feminism. And yes, as we can see, our viewers went up when you said that there's something to be said for being a kept woman. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I could just lie here and just take the money. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you got any questions, Ola? Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to move on from this because we're never going to live it down. <laughs> no, we're not, are we? Go on, <laughs> You can't say it weren't fun. We did say it was a okay. <laughs> There's no social abstinence, it's all fun, and there are no phantom flan flingers. I did promise that, didn't I? You did, you did, you did. Go on, so have we got another question? We have. Let me just get the screen with the questions. Um, okay. How do I stop myself getting distracted on social media? Well, I think we're the wrong people to ask because, as you can see, we started off with half a dozen questions. We're halfway through our show. We've managed to talk about feminism, which Disney princess we are. Oh, and answer just two questions. <laughs> and you're right. It is so easy to get distracted on social media because, if you know, as you said, most people are there for, for entertainment and fun, and you're there with a business purpose. So, if you, you know, you, you're going to have to participate. Did you hear me clock announce the time? Sorry about that. <laughs> Talking clock. clock. That's me clock telling you it's, it's uh, 15 hours. It speaks to me. It's a way of making me go to bed in the night. It's, like it's 4 a.m. You think, should, should be bed. <laughs> anyway. So, what, 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 Distracted uh, much? Yeah, yes, it's very much. distracting. <laughs> Turn all the noise off. Oh, all the noise. So what I was going to say is it's easy to get distracted on social media because there's just so much going on. There's, you know, there's links, links to click, videos to watch, and your, your community are going to be sharing stuff that's of interest to them, and you want to engage with it. So the best strategy is, is to have a strategy, to literally plan what you're going to do each time you're going to go onto your social media. You've already worked out what your posts are, who you're going to engage with, and why, what you're looking to achieve, and then you stick to it. You literally get on. Do what you're going to do and get off. And it's really about regimenting yourself. So if you need to put a timer up to time to ring when your time's up, then put up a time up because you could quite easily spend hours on any any one of the platforms. And whilst that might be you know entertaining for you, and there is a longer term strategic goal because you're building relationships. Every hour you spend on social media is an hour you could be doing something else. So it's got an opportunity. Absolutely. 
It's an hour you can be building a relationship with the people you're already connected with via your newsletter. Absolutely. It's an hour you could spend editing a blog post to make it super sharp. It's an hour that you could spend elsewhere. I find if I say I'm going to spend 20 minutes on Twitter, if I spend 20 minutes on Twitter, that's exactly the time I spend. If I say I'm going to spend 40 minutes on it, do you know what? I'll spend 40 minutes, but I won't have done anything more than what I would have done in that 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I guess you've got to plan your time, plan it wisely, and know that if you say it'll take an hour to do something, it will take an hour. However, you've got to be real, realistic and live in the real world because it may only actually take you 20 minutes. It may only actually take you 30 minutes to do something. But if you're over-scheduling your time mm -hmm. and giving yourself more than you actually need, you're actually wasting your time and not being as productive. And that's just a bigger social media time suck as actually being on Facebook or Twitter and clicking everything and retweeting everybody. It's absolutely true because uh, what you know, one of the ways you can do that is be very clear on what you're going to do. So if you think you can, because I, I have lots of these procedure things. So I'm going to engage with ten people. That's it. So I'm going to find the ten people that I need to engage with. I'm going to retweet five people. I'm going to post two updates. So that's a list of things that you've got to do. And so that is time driven, eventually you'll know exactly how long it will take you to do that. So if it only takes you 10 minutes to do that, then that's how long it's going to take you to do. But if you know that engaging with 10 people actually takes you about 25 minutes to have the conversation, look up their threads and all the rest of it, you know that's what it's going to take. But you're, you're, you're doing your 10. You know, you're doing that number. So you have to kind of do what you do in life. In fact, you do what you do and you manage your business all anyway. We're all business owners. We're managing our time and our business. It doesn't change when you get onto the, the social media. You know, if, no. if you've been managing so your email... I've got to ask you, Ola, before you carry on with that thought, when you follow someone, you go and check out all their friends? All no, no not, not necessarily. But um, I, if I'm going to um, follow somebody, I do make sure that I'm following the person that's of benefit to my business. And yeah, so I'll have a quick look at their profile. I don't necessarily check out their friends, but I check out who they are. Because a lot of times you go to follow somebody and it turns out that they're a 15 year old kid. And you think, well, okay, I don't mind 15 year old kids, but they're never going to be one of my customers because that's not m what my business is about. So um, on the whole, chances are that you know, if I choose to follow them, I, I'm following them for a different reason because we're engaging. But yeah, I do think it's worth checking out um, who you who you engage with a bit more about them when you talk to them because that's what you do in real life and I, I think what we've kind of got the notion that social media is almost like it's a magic bean that you can throw it into the ground and overnight it's going to do some wonderful things for you but actually if you thought of going to a network meeting if you actually did real world networking it takes time to build up relationships if you just go there and give out your business cards randomly you don't get many many leads from that because most people just throw them away. And just following people randomly is, is akin to just giving out your business cards to any Tom, Dick and Harry. But what makes more sense is if you have a conversation with somebody, find out a bit more about them and then think, actually, it's worth us engaging. And that's the same on social media. That one contact could be worth the 50 random people you connected with because you've you know you've got a reason for following them you know they're interested in what you're what you're talking about and you can build a solid relationship so um, numbers isn't the issue in social media is it it's, it's, it's not a, a vanity numbers game it's more about quality and you mm -hmm. don't need a million followers if you've got a hundred followers who regularly spend money with you they're better than a million who buy nothing ever you know. Yeah, and that does tend to be a big trap that people fall into is I've got to have 10,000 followers, I've got to have 20,000, I've got to have 100,000, I'm nobody unless I've got all of these fans on Facebook and I'm nobody unless I'm in 10 million circles on G+. Um, it's not about that at all because when you think about it, when you first start out on social media, the people you tend to talk to are the people you know already. When I started on Twitter, I was also on a site called Academy. Mm -hmm. And the people I spoke to on Twitter were the people that I knew on Academy. So there were people that I knew already. And that gave me the confidence to go and talk to other people. And slowly over the years, I've followed people and unfollowed people, as you do. But when you first start out, the people that you talk to are the people that you know already. They're the people that are not going to say, you can't tweet that silly update. They're going to 
tweet you and say, what's that all about? And you can say, oh my gosh, my cat ran across my keyboard. You know, and you can have a... <laughs> Oh, my cat slept on mine and deleted things, uploaded things. Oh. And somebody told me about there's a special app that you install on your desktop that can detect when the cats come and sleep on your keyboard so it disables the keyboard. And I can't remember <laughs> who told me. So if you're watching this and the replay, Play or right now and you know what that cat app is that stops your keyboard working when your cat lays on it I need to know you can email me or tweet me at Sarah Arrow and tell me this is the cat keyboard thing that you're looking for Sarah I mean it's because my cat is not for laying on my keyboard and tweeting things and oh so you obviously didn't break your cat well my cat wouldn't dream of lying on my keyboard because she does it's the no no <laughs> Well, yours is a South London cat and mine's an Essex cat. Absolutely, so, um, you know, it's like a cat looks at me and it'd be like, okay, I'm outside, I'm outside, it's cool, you're cool, I'm, I'm not there, I'm not there. Because, you know, sometimes I come in and she knows she's not allowed to sleep on the leather sofa because of the claws. And I look at her and she goes, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. And she just get off. <laughs> I don't know what she's saying here. She's like, I'm going. Okay, I know, and then she'll just come. You know the way cats walk off, like they just like, mm. yeah. Who are you? You're just a human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she yeah. Be like you. So I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. We digress again. We're terrible. Yes. Well, well, yes, but we'll get the hang of it. Okay, our next question: Can I swear on Twitter? Yes, you can. Um, whether people will be offended or not is down to them, but what you say is down to you. And if you want to be known as that swearing person on Twitter, then swear away. I believe there's some kind of app called Cursebird which will go through your tweets and tell you exactly how many times you've actually sworn on Twitter. I think I've done it once and I think I said shit back in 2008. And now I've said it in a Google Hangout it's Live, scary. so it's got to find that and say I've said it twice. <laughs> Now, <laughs> I know, I've gone. Is shit swearing? I don't know. Shit swearing. <laughs> I thought you could say shit. Say shit in South London. <laughs> we say shit. It's the fan all the time, Danny. <laughs> well, we use the F word like a full stop, and the C word starts a sentence. However, it can get offensive to some people, so I do have to watch my language. However, um. In being authentic, if I'm upset and I want to use a swear word because that's how I would talk in real life, then I do use them. I tend to use them more on Facebook than I do on Twitter. And I've got to be honest, I don't tweet headlines of really great articles if they've got a swear word in the headline. Um, yeah, I'm um, double standards, two-faced, whatever you want to call it. I just don't tweet headlines with swear words in. I don't know why. I don't know whether it's because I'm personally frightened of upsetting people or whether I think there's a better word. I just, if something is really good, I edit the title. And if something's really good and it's got a swear word and I haven't got time, then I don't share it. So I tend not to um, have that many swear words in my Twitter stream. It's just in real life and on video. <laughs> Well, I, I, what the, I think the key question to ask yourself as a small business is, what is your brand? What is your brand mm -hmm. image, your message? If your brand is, you know, there's, some people have made huge industries out of their brand being the aggressive, angry, swear all the time person. If that's your brand, your audience are going to expect it. It's going to be fine. If that isn't your brand, if your brand is, you know, respectable um, business owner who, you know, is BBC kind of English, that's how that moderate ass swear words are, and you suddenly come out with profanity, you're going to alienate your, your audience. They're going to think, who's this person? This is not who I, I'm, I'm, I thought I was connected to. And you run the risk of, um, of losing them. So, yeah, be yourself, but yourself is the brand that you've decided to be. And, um, As we were at the start talking about the photoshopped image, it's mm -hmm. be your best self. Don't Absolutely. be... A, a self that is your worst self. Nobody actually wants to see you drunkenly tweeting and stalking your ex-girlfriends on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> your examples are hilarious. Yeah, it's true. 
<laughs> I tend to not tweet. Um, so like I, I do um, 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 light-hearted water cooler moments that we call Candy Frost. And my kids are always sending them to me. And I never tweet the ones with the swear words in or the ones that I think are slightly kind of a, a bit non-PC. Not because they're not funny, because often they are. But you know, I just don't want to offend anyone. And it's quite easy oh. to offend people. And in, and since you know it could cause offence, and it's not my intention to offend, I err on the side of caution like you. Well, why do it? You could do something else, you know, because I'm not out there to just offend you. But if your brand is, you know, if you're the angry out there to offend, this is, you know, I'm, I'm the political advo advocate, oh, activist. Activist. <laughs> Get the words in. Then by all means, that's your brand. So be authentic, I think, is what we're both saying. Mm-hmm. Okay, well... We're almost out of time, Marla. Um, okay. Now, if you wish to find us, you will find me at Sarky Media, that's Sark, S-A-R-K, emedia.com, and you will see a tab at the top that says Social Media Abstinence Show, and there you can submit a question. You can also visit Elam Media, which is Ola's site, which is www.ee, now that's Extra E is the one that's going to fool you. Double E L A N Media dot com, and you can get in touch with Ola and send her a question. You can also tweet a question, and obviously you've got our email addresses if you visit our blog and our contact and all of that. So leave questions, and next week we've got a guest, I believe, haven't we? We've yes, just got we to confirm do. up. And you're so, going to tell us the guest name because I've forgotten it. <laughs> um, it's hopefully Mr. Nick Kellett from Listly. Listly Excellent. is a really great tool that's um, handy for keeping track of all kinds of information and you can use your blog or you can use the Listly site directly to keep track of your information. So hopefully next week we'll have Mr. Nick Kellett to answer questions about keeping track of your information across social media and creating really, really good lists. And in the meantime, you know where we are. Send us your questions, and we will try to answer them in a more organized fashion next week. Yeah, and yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be boring. That would be boring. <laughs> and if you've got anything you need to know, you know where to find us. Come and leave a comment on our blogs or tweet us on Twitter. And we look forward to seeing you next Friday. Should be 2 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, but we may be a few minutes late if I'm still putting my lippy on and trying to find my nice coloured clothes so my webcam-y thing looks better. Hmm. It's too yeah. much effort, these hangouts. No, I think you look fine just the way you are. You should just show up. Actually, you're going to have to change your clothes or they're going to think we didn't... <laughs> we didn't <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and we will change our clothes for our next episode. And I won't wear my Wonder Woman slash Batwoman cape. I will. Um, I'll find Wonder nice... Woman outfit. Have I you? Find... Yeah, shall I put it on? Yeah, <laughs> next week. Next week, I promise you, Ola will be in a Wonder Woman outfit, <laughs> and I'll be wearing my suit and looking smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. No, I didn't say that. Sarah did. I will not be wearing my Wonder Woman outfit next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll upload the picture that I've got of me wearing it somewhere. I'll look Not good it. enough. Okay. Not good enough. Oh, right. I'll think It's a real thing or <laughs> the real thing or not at all. <laughs> so tune in for next Friday's episode of the Social Media Abstinence Show. Ola in her Wonder Woman outfit and me wearing <laughs> something else. <laughs> Goodbye, have a great weekend. See you next week. Bye. Bye.